Hi, everybody. So I thought I'd do a couple of video tutorials on these task assignments to get you guys started. Uh, so rather than meeting one-on-one, -on -one, I'm gonna create this series of videos, or probably one video. Uh, that way you can actually reference the video whenever you have a question or forget how to do something. Um, so the first thing we wanna do, regardless of your task, is you wanna navigate to the Microsoft Teams page. And we're gonna go to the file section. I created a folder here called model elements, which you're gonna access. So whatever you're working on, if you're working on entourage, plating trees and cars, you're gonna access the site model. If you're actually working on the building model, you're gonna access the building model. And if you're developing and designing a kiosk, you're gonna download the kiosk model. So to get started, I'm gonna uh, start this video tutorial with the kiosk model. So first thing I'm gonna do is download it. And I'm gonna download it to uh, the desktop. So I already have it here, so I'm not gonna do that, but you would hit save, have it somewhere saved. And then the next thing you wanna do is you wanna be signed in and logged into your SketchUp web app. So once you're in SketchUp web app, you're gonna uh, open a file and you click open on my computer and you're gonna navigate to that file that you just downloaded, which is this kiosk model. So that's, what that's gonna do is gonna open up the model that I uploaded for you guys, and that's gonna be your starting point for uh, starting to develop a kiosk. So once you get to this model, you're gonna have the option to do to work on a small kiosk, which is something like this, a medium kiosk, a large kiosk, or an extra large kiosk. Um, so obviously the bigger you go, the more, the more work that you're gonna do, but if you're feeling like a challenge, I would suggest going with the, uh, large or possibly extra large uh, kiosk. So step one is gonna be to modify the materials of the kiosk. So for that, I'm gonna choose, I'm gonna work with this kiosk. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just copy it. So I move it and hit control on my keyboard and that makes a copy of it. And I'll just do it off to the side over here so I don't mess with those. The next thing I wanna do is right click on it and um, explode it. So as you can see, this kiosk, is basically just a little island with some um, chairs or bar chairs around it and it has a little structure with a little header uh, which works as lighting you can kind of see that uh, white lighting in the interior um, we don't have to worry about that right now but what i want everybody to do is kind of customize it with using different colors so just kind of make it unique uh, try something different so one thing that i'm going to do right away is go i'm going to click into this model uh, and I noticed that it takes a little bit to get in there, but you know you're inside the model or inside the, the model group once you can select the surface and, and it, it gives you this hatch. So if you click on something and it still gives you this blue outline, it means that there's something inside of there. You can't modify it unless you get in there. So what you wanna do is you click again, all of a sudden you, you can click on that surface and that's when you can start modifying it. So all the, thing, all, the only thing you have to do here is actually paint something. So. I'm gonna go to my paint bucket and I'm gonna select a color for it. And same thing, I'm gonna color this little frame. Um, I'm gonna actually color it this like maroon color. And something you can do here is, if you have a model that has a lot of different surfaces of the same color, you can actually, so one thing you can do is click on each surface once and it'll color it. But I'm gonna go on, I'm gonna do that and show you what you can actually do to color everything at once. So if everything that, if you wanna change everything that is black, you hold shift and when you click, if you click on one of the surfaces, it'll actually paint all of the other surfaces the same color. So that's, again, that's holding shift while you, while you apply painting. So this is what, this is the theme of my, of my uh, kiosk. I'm gonna go with like a maroon and a green. So now I wanna go and change all the black color. So I'm gonna change all the frame to um, maroon. So another way to select everything, if I wanna select everything at the same time is just triple click and I'm gonna hit B again. And as I have the maroon selected, I'm gonna apply it again. So I changed all of the, let's see if there's anything else. Oh, and my bar stools, I'm actually, or my bar tables, I'm gonna change that to maroon as well. So I'm trying to, I'm coming up with a theme, right? And I'm making this as up as, up as I go. So I hope you guys get inspired and do something unique as well. Um, I'm gonna change all of the wood to this green. So I'm gonna click on all the wood and paint it all green. And then the bar top, I'm gonna to make that uh, marble. So I'm just kind of going off of what the materials that are in here. 
and that can be anything you know you guys can choose whatever color you want and i'm going to make all my bar stools um let's see what do we have here i'm going to browse and see what else we have um carpets fabrics leathers textiles I'm gonna choose a different wood for my bar stools. I'm gonna go with this. Um, no, these are not very nice. Well, I'll go with this one, like a walnut. So hopefully these are all components and they all change at the same time. So basically I'm clicking into the group until I can select. And as you can see, as, as soon as I start modifying one, they all get selected. So that means that they're components and they'll all change at the same time. So I'm just gonna pick all the wood. So that didn't do too much of a difference, but I change it, which is enough. And I'm also going to choose that same wood for my header. So here we have a uh, two different colors. So I just want to select one of the black ones. Or actually, I'm not so I'm not going to select anything. Hit B, hold Shift, and I'm going to click on one of the black surfaces, and that's going to change all of the all, but only the black surfaces. So I want to retain that white color in there. So I feel like I have a pretty unique color scheme here. Um, so that's step one. Step two. I'm going to name it something interesting, funny, or witty. So uh, I'm going to pick one of these faces. I'm going to pick this face, and I'm going to um, try to find the text tool, which is under this icon, the rectangle icon. If you click on it, it'll open up these sub icons. And at the very bottom here, you find the 3D text icon. So this is where you come up with your name. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to go on Pinterest. And I'm gonna come up with ice cream shop names. Ice cream logos. And see if I can find a funny name that I can name this shop. Um, salt and straw, there you go. That's what I'm gonna name it. So I'm gonna go back to my model and I'm gonna call it salt and straw. Oops. Okay. And I'm going to make it one foot high. I'm going to make it filled and I'm going to extrude it to three inches. So that's how deep the logo is going to be. Um, and I'm going to change the font to something a little bit more fun. Let's see what that looks like. There you go. See that? So now I have my shop. It's a little deep. I'm going to scale this in. So I, I press S to scale. And I'm gonna I'm gonna click on it, and then before I let go, I'm gonna put 0.5, so it's half of the scale deep. There you go. So now I'm gonna try to put that logo on two faces. So I'm gonna copy it and paste it on this face as well. As you can see, I might have to actually scale it a little bit. It's a little bit big, so I'm gonna hit S again. This time, instead of pressing the the width, I'm gonna press a diagonal here, and I'm just gonna draw drag it until it looks a little bit better. So not too big, but I want it to fit in there. And then I'm just gonna move it, center it here. So move it to the side, move it up. And I want that same size on this side. So I'm gonna delete that one, select Control C to copy, Control V to paste, and I'll just try to paste it in the middle. So that's step two. Step three, as you notice here, I put a bunch of people on the side. So these are all Enscape people, so they'll render a little differently once you actually hit the rendering button. So I'm gonna take and I want everybody to put around four to six people. If you have one of the bigger kiosks, you can put a little bit more, maybe up to 10 or 12. But I'm just gonna take a few of these people. And uh, one of the things that I wanna do is find a couple of people that are sitting down and have them sit down around my bar. So I'm gonna copy these guys out and paste them over here on my around my bars. You have kind of like a server there, but I'm interested in these people. Uh, and kind of putting them in the bar area. So I'm gonna align them there and then lift them up a little bit, move them up so that they're actually sitting on the bar. And these people can actually look like they're talking to each other. So they'll just kind of be sitting off to the side like that. But then I want this person, actually this person, to actually so I'm gonna explode this guy. I'm gonna select her stool and her and push her off a little bit back so that her feet are not hitting or clashing with the with the bar. But I'm gonna sit her just right here. And then this person too, I'm gonna to sit her on this side. And I'm gonna 
find the rotate tool. Where's the rotate tool? Okay, so under the move icon, you're gonna rotate. And then I'm just gonna kind of select on the blue, on a blue surface, horizontal close to her, and then just start rotating her 90 degrees so she's facing into the bar. And then I'll just kind of slightly maneuver her and push her stool back so that she's not kicking the bar too. And then I'm gonna put this person who looks like they're offering some kind of drink and I'm gonna kind of move them on the inside here. So that's five people. I'll have one more person walking by or this couple walking by. So I'll copy that out and just paste them there. Looks like I'm resizing my screen. Anyway, so when I'm done with that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make that a group, copy it. So first of all, and then I'm gonna save this file. So I'll just say, I forgot, I should have done this in the beginning. So save this file as soon as you can. I'm gonna call it kiosk model. You always wanna save file whenever you're switching files because something can happen and you might lose your work. So now it says up here, saving. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new model. So keep in mind that I've already, I, I, I copied my previous model that I made and now I'm gonna paste it into a brand new model. And I'll just paste it somewhere here along the origin. It takes a couple of seconds. So there you go. Now I have basically just my model, nothing else. And I have my little kiosk that I designed. Um, and I'm gonna save it. And everybody that's working on a kiosk is gonna do this. So you're gonna select your SketchUp. You're gonna save it and call it kiosk dash and your name. So that's Ricky. And then finally, what you're gonna do after you're done saving, so let this kind of hit save, you're gonna download this model out and do 2019 and save that to your desktop. Then you're gonna go back to the Microsoft Teams and let me do this right now as I showed you, but under files, I'm gonna create uh, a new folder uh, where does it go? New folder, and I'm gonna call it student files. So click in there and then drag your, um, the model that you just worked on and upload it into there. You'll see here it's just uploading. It takes a couple of seconds. There you go, all done. Okay, so that's for the kiosk team. So now I'm gonna start working on the site team and we're gonna end up with the architectural model team. So next is site team. So it's gonna go back to the files category under model elements. Now I'm gonna download the site model. And same thing. I'm gonna go back to my web app and I'm gonna open up the model that I just downloaded. So I'm gonna add a model here. Site model, open. So this is for all the people who are working on Entourage, uh, including cars, trees, and people, okay? So while we wait for that model to open, I realized that I forgot to put people in this model. So um, when I actually upload this video, the people will be in the model, so you don't have to worry about that. But I'll, sh I'll demonstrate how to, you know, how to kind of like apply them and sprinkle them out throughout the site. So this is the entire site model with our building site. And this is just a placeholder for the building. Uh, the people working on the architectural building will actually develop this a little bit further. Uh, but that's essentially what the building's gonna look like. So while I wait for my model to load. Okay, so anybody that's working on trees and cars, um, here's three different cars. These might actually be identical, but what I want you to help me with is just placing the car. So just take a car and place it on the correct lane and on the correct uh, 
the side of the street, right? So you can kind of see the cars facing that way. So obviously we want to go on the right lane. Um, this one, we're going to place one like right here. And then we're going to rotate that one 90 or 180 degrees and just place them on the right side of the lane. The other thing that people who are working on cars can help me with <clears throat> is uh, stretching this road out uh, a little bit past the Coliseum. Um, so what you want to help me with is taking this and then copying it over 30 feet and then multiplying it times, you know, however many times it takes to get to the Coliseum. Oops. So that was 12 times. It might take more times than that, but I'll give somebody an assignment to go on this road all the way. I'll get somebody an assignment to put that road on this uh, on this road and then another person to put it on this road. So it might take a little bit to um, to tweak. Like for example, if we're gonna put it on this road, you can tell that the road is a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna, there's my sidewalk. I'm gonna rotate it. be perpendicular and um, I have to make this one unique because I'm going to edit this component and I don't want any of these components to edit so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take that boundary and stretch it let's say five feet so how much more do I need I need five feet four inches so I'm going to take five feet four inches five feet four inches there you go and what that allows me to do is basically add another uh, drive lane. So uh, a drive lane is typically 10 to 12 feet. So since we kind of went 10 feet extra, now we can add another drive lane. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You just, you know, we can choose where we want it to be. So let's go uh, 10 feet or 11 feet this way. So basically now we have three drive lanes going to the right and then uh, two drive lanes going on the left and that's fine. Um, we can also make it kind of like a middle lane, you know, for like, turning left or right. So we can do that. But I'll let whoever's working on this and I'll assign this on the on the next spreadsheet. I'll let whoever's working on this kind of handle and make that decision. So then you can start, you can continue uh, making that road. And don't worry about trying to fix these little intersection corners, like just go up close to it and I'll actually come in here. That's a little bit more advanced modeling and it's gonna take a little more while. So I'll take care of those if we need to, if they show up in the rendering views. But for now, just kinda of, just kind of do the, the straightaway, the straightaway lines in between. Sounds good? So then, you know, as we, as we develop the road, I want whoever's working on each individual road and I'll assign names to each road uh, to start putting cars and just kind of make it look, you know, like, like it would on a regular road. So not too many, not too few. Um, they should be kind of like randomly sparsed out, you know, so like it shouldn't be like one, 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 one. It should be like one here and then have some space and then another random little group of clusters just so it looks natural. So it doesn't look like forced, but um, don't go too crazy. Try to concentrate your, your actions to around this area because that's where we're going to be sh uh, shooting renderings from. So there's no need to, you know, go all the way out here and, and think about how to put cars over there. Just put a few random ones on the ex extents of the model. Um, for trees, whoever's working on trees, um, basically we need a tree inside every one of these little uh, tree planter pots. So if you need to create your own roads um, to put the trees, go ahead and create the road and then you can delete the road afterwards, right? But just have the trees wherever they need to be. And I think they just go 30 feet each way. So um, I'll assign roads for tree people as well. Uh, actually, they're, yeah, they're 30 feet, 30 feet apart because they just go up to, yeah. So I'll assign, the same way that I'm assigning roads, I'll assign trees for people and, you know, we'll limit it to like these four cross streets. And then finally, like I mentioned in the, in the, I don't actually have the people here, but and when you up, when you upload those model, the people will be there by the time you upload it. So I'll have a wide variety of people and we need people walking down the streets, you know, so close to the, close to our site, we'll need a, a few more uh, on the sidewalks and then we'll need people walking around the building, 
uh, and then some people inside the building, but I'll try to limit the people inside of the building to the people developing the kiosk uh, for now. So that way we don't have people uh, crashing into each other when we post the model. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna assign a region. For example, uh, I might do something like this and say, you know, one person has to take, has to put uh, people in this region. And I'll, I'll make it more obvious. I, I kind of quickly modeled that. Oh, let me see if I can do that. There you go. So I'll say this region belongs to, uh, I don't know, uh, Avivian, for example. So Avivian, you'll be responsible for laying out your people and also putting a few trees on that site as well. You know, so maybe like two or three. And it's up to you to design it however you want. But these are the smaller trees. These are the, the trees that are going to go in the site. And then these are the trees that are going to go on the street. So that's the that's that's pretty easy. That's that's uh, essentially that's what the site modeling group will do. And now I'm going to jump onto the architectural modeling. So if you don't need to listen to these parts, you can just um, skip out. But architectural modeling. So what you're going to do is you're going to uh, download the model. In same process. Uh, we're going to download it to the desktop. Go back to SketchUp. I'm not going to save this model because I actually need to update it. So I'm just going to go into Open and Add Model. Architectural model. Where is it? Building model. So here we have a shell of the building model with uh, kind of like this glass facade and these ribbons, right? So what I need help with is developing each individual ribbon. So when you open up the model, again, I'll actually have everybody, whoever uh, is assigned to this ribbon, for example, will have their name next to it. So that way you know what model to what uh, ribbon to work on. And so for example, if I'm assigning, let's say, so let me just show you what that would look like just so you have a, a visual. So say Ricky. That's Ricky's. So if that if that if you're the student named Ricky and you come into this model, what you want to do is you want to grab the ribbon and it might be good to group it. And then I'm going to copy it out and I'm just going to copy it out a certain distance so that makes sense. So 150 feet. All right, so I have the ribbon and then I need the corresponding glass next to that ribbon. So if I'm that ribbon, the corresponding glass is the one that's kind of like facing underneath the, the ribbon. So if that's my ribbon, then this glass is, belongs to that ribbon, correct? So this glass, would, for example, would belong to that ribbon and so on and so on. Some of the ones in the middle have two sides. So for example, if you're assigned to this ribbon, you're actually gonna be responsible for this glass as well as this glass, because they're both kind of underneath that ribbon, if it makes sense. Um, not that one, that one belongs to that one. But let's continue with this one. So what you wanna do is you wanna get in there and that's already grouped. So I'm gonna move it and copy it. So just again, to, to reiterate, to move and copy something, you should let M for move, or you can come to this icon right here and it's this move. You're gonna start dragging. And as you're dragging on your crease, on your keyboard hit control and that'll create a copy of that. So I'm gonna drag along that green line. You can kind of see that green line and I'm gonna put 150 feet just like I did for my ribbon. So now I'm gonna cut the, uh, so now I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna explode that. So now I have my ribbon and my glass. So if you notice here next to the model, there is a large vertical stick and those are gonna be our glass mullions. And you can tell that they're, they were constructed out of a solid. And at the very bottom here, if you zoom in a little closely, there's a just a random line. And that line is gonna allow you to place the mullion in good relationship to where the glass brick is. So we don't actually want the mullion um, so close to the glass. Like we don't want it touching the glass. We want it to be kind of like floating behind it just to give the effect of like, you know, like structure behind glass. So you, when you see is you just see a full plane of glass and the, and the structure is kind of like mass behind. So we're gonna take that stick and kind of 
uh, place it close to the glass. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start moving the stick by selecting the end of the stick right here on the line. And we're gonna start with the first one right there. And then I'm gonna control, uh, move and copy the next one. And I'm gonna go up to the next line. And after that point, you can just hit times. You can see on my lower right here, I'm starting to type times. And I'm gonna need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten 10, 10 mullions. But I'm gonna do uh, 12 or 15 just for safety. So now I have 15. So you can tell that they're slightly off. I'm not sure why. It looks like one of the mullions is off. So let's try that again. I'm gonna select that. And I'm gonna try to just go distance between the mullions and see what that is. Five feet times 15. There you go. I had just done it wrong the wrong the first time, but you can tell that they're now now they're lining up. So I can delete the ones that I don't need, the one at the end I don't need, and then these extra ones I don't need. So now I have all of my mullions in place, but you can tell that they need to be trimmed off to whatever that volume is going to be. So I'm going to group them all, select them all, and right click on one of them and make them a group, and we'll come back to that. Second thing you need to do is um, you need to come into this. So I'll double click into this surface and then we can start erasing the mullion lines. So we don't need the lines anymore since they don't show up in the rendering, only physical objects show up. So we can erase all of these lines and we can start using this surface to kind of create our, our ribbing structure. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the source surface and move it back along the red and I'm gonna make a copy of it. So on the back side, this copy, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make an offset. So we're gonna go find offset, which is under the push and tool, push and pull tool, and it's this um, tool here at the bottom. And we're gonna go and offset exactly uh, four inches. So you can see this offset kind of going along the rib here. And what we wanna do is we wanna go to the edges and just continue that line. So if you, if you start, click once, and then drag your line along that first kind of like line, hold shift, and it'll allow you to just continue it to the end and just go a little bit past the end and erase that, that, it, that extra at the end. And we're gonna do that again on the last end. So, so now we can erase everything except for that upper rib. So we don't need any of these lines. So now we have this like um, offset rib and that's gonna be our structure. So then we're gonna go uh, 18 inches. Actually, let's go, that's too much. Let's go six inches. And I'm gonna paint it the same color as, uh, as the metal. So I'm gonna triple, triple click, hit B and paint it. And then I'm gonna group it. And then I'm gonna, since this, uh, this rib is pretty symmetrical or an extrusion, we can just copy that one to the other end. So now as you move around your model, you'll notice that um, there's two surfaces on top of each other. So you can kind of see when you rotate around, you can kind of see them overlapping. So we don't, wanna, we don't want that dirty surfacing to occur. So I'm just gonna select that edge and I'm gonna move it there. And same here, I'm gonna select this whole right edge and I'm just gonna move it back a little bit. We're almost there. So now the last thing is we wanna clip the, uh, the mullions, right? So what I wanna do is I wanna make a, temporarily make a copy. So not a copy, sorry. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push this um, glass extrusion and I'm just gonna push it back far enough so that I'm creating basically a volume in which I can trim my, uh, my mullions. So, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy that volume that I just, that I just manipulated. I'm gonna hit control C, but then I'm gonna undo everything that I just did. So I want back, I just wanna go back to the single surface. So, um, so now that surface stays as is. So now it's important that this, these mullions were grouped because we wanna go into that group and I want to paste in place. And this is something that I actually forgot how to do in here. 
Where is it? Let me research real quick. Oh, there you go. Paste in place. All you got to do is search on the search and it'll paste in place. So now that we have everything, like we have this volume, I'm going to erase these side. I'm going to select on the side surface. And I just have these. Oh, and I don't need this one either. This is not really important that you do this, but as you can see, we have a surface that can clip the mullions at the bottom and they can clip the mullions at the top. And what I'm noticing is that I actually don't need this surface. What I need is this surface at the bottom. So I need that surface. So I need to come in, click in here and just select any of the surfaces that are select and, sh and hold shift so that I can select multiple. Anything that's touching a mullion. So all of these that are touching a mullion. I know this seems a little tricky, but um, bear with me. We'll, we'll get through it. So now that I selected all those upper surfaces, I'm just gonna hit control. I'm not actually gonna modify anything. I'm just gonna hit control C and copy them. And then I'm gonna go back to this model and I'm gonna paste that in place. So now you can see we have all of these uh, surfaces, right? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna select everything and I, I'm gonna explode it. So then all the mullions are exploded and I'm gonna select everything again and I'm gonna hit intersect faces with selection. So that basically anything that was selected is intersected with each other. And now what I can do is I just select everything up here in the top portion from, from uh, starting a selection box from right to left. So anything that I touch within that box will get deleted. So I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna delete that. And you can tell that I, only the tops were deleted. So anything that intersected with these surfaces is not deleted. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the bottom. Be very careful that I don't touch anything. So notice that when I go from right to left, when I select, anything gets selected. Anything that I touch gets selected. Surfaces, lines that are included inside that selection. But if I go from right to left, from left to right, sorry, I only, anything that's inside that box gets selected. So anything that touches is excluded. I don't know if that makes sense, but let me try that again. Right to left, anything that I touch within that box will get selected. See how the tops get selected as well? So that's the difference. So now we're almost there. So now I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna select all these surfaces while holding shift. So double click on everything. There you go, and I'm gonna make that a group and delete it. There you go, so you end up with just the bottom of the mullions. And then we can repeat that for the top as well. So I'm gonna select that, oops, this is gonna be a little tricky. Let me see if there's hide rest of the model. Hide rest of the model. So if you go here, hide rest of the model, you can turn that on real quick and that'll make it easier so that you don't select anything in the background. So I'm gonna double click. Hold, hold shift, double click, oops. If I triple click, just triple click again to deselect. Double click only. Double click, double click, double click. Double click, double click, almost there. Double click. I'm holding shift as I double click so I don't lose my other selection. Double click, double click. Right click, make group, delete. I forgot one. Make group, delete. There you go. So we end up with a finished band. So that's what our architecture is gonna look like. So when we actually render this, we'll see these mullions kind of in the background floating back there. And uh, it'll look like we have a, a nice little structure in there. So that's pretty much it. So once you're done, select everything. So you can either select from right to left or left to right, either way. Make it a group, delete. Actually, just leave it where just leave it wherever you model it. I can actually place it in place back uh, like this whenever you you're done. Oh, that wasn't it. That was the other one. So then, if everybody helps out with one of these ribbons, we can get to this pretty fast. As you can see, it it would have taken me maybe like you know ten minutes per ribbon, but if we all take a stab at you know. Uh, working on different ribbons, we can get this accomplished much faster.
So that's the lesson. So feel free to rewind and pause as you kind of go through this tutorial to learn how to do everything that I just showed you. And if you have any specific questions, feel free to, to call me or email me. Uh, my cell phone number is always included in my, uh, in my email signature. So any of my emails that have the signature will have my cell phone number in there. And finally, when you're done, you know, just save, save the model and put your name at the end of the model and upload it to the Microsoft Teams student models folder. So I'll do that right now just to give you an example of what that is. Oh, so I actually saved it. Um, I need to rename this. I don't know if there's a way to rename or save as. Let's find out. Save as. We'll call it building model slash Ricky. Of course, that'll be your own name when you're done. And then we go back to um, saving. So finally, we have to download it. I think I showed how to do this in one of the previous files, but um, I'll just do this just so that to reiterate, you download this model 2019 version. That's the SketchUp file that I have. And then you save it to your desktop, navigate back to the Microsoft Teams. And then on the desktop, you're gonna find your model, building model Ricky, upload it to student files. And you'll see that appear in a couple of uh, seconds, depending on how big the file and your internet speed, but there it is. So that's, that's the work guys. Um, if any, if there's any questions, feel free to contact me. Okay. Thank you.